All right, before we get into the video, this video is gonna have three parts. Part one, I'm gonna tell you because we are the Electrical Contractor channel, why as an electrical contractor, you need to know about this panel and why you need to start selling it. How and all the benefits that's gonna help your business grow. Part two, we're gonna head over to my friend, Steven Cavallaris over at electricaltime.com where he is gonna give us his top tips on code requirements when you change out a sub panel, things you need to look for so you will pass your inspection. And then of course, part three, my guys are gonna head downstairs cause this thing's going in my own house here in Montana. They're gonna show you the install they're going to show you the tips and tricks as they take out an old sub panel to put in a new sub panel like this. So you ready? Let's get into the video. So guys, first and foremost, I ordered the 42 space panel. It's pretty incredible that Leviton even offers a 42 space panel. The reason why is I actually needed two sub panels down in my basement because I'm an electrician and I kept adding stuff, right? This is gonna cover me now into one single panel. It's got the spaces you need, so almost any job. This also comes in the 20, 30, 42 space like the one you see here and a whopping 66 spaces. Good for any installation you could throw at it. Let's talk about why you should be selling this panel. Reason number one, it's the number one complaint I get from clients or even contractors when you have to install a sub panel in a visual area. That would be a laundry room or a worst case hallway or bedroom. Leviton comes in white. You see how beautiful this panel already is? Well, it's not only the panel that comes in white. Guess what else does? So do the covers. The panel covers come in white now, but it's not only white. They also come in two versions, perfect for an upsell. They come with the plain white cover or the one I ordered because hell yeah, the plexiglass cover where you can see inside the panel. What a game changer. Imagine having a Star Wars fan as a customer. Somebody wants to put this in their game room or somewhere in the living room. This is actually a conversation piece. It's not a panel. Can you imagine eventually if they get a LED kit for this thing or you can figure out how to put LEDs in here safely and light this thing up? But not only does the panel come in white, the breakers come in white. And I'm gonna tell you about these breakers and I'm gonna tell you how you're gonna upsell to your smart Wi-Fi breakers and surge protectors. Let me show you those right now. So this whole system ties into the Wi-Fi breaker. The Wi-Fi breakers have a symbol right there on the edge that say that they're Wi-Fi. Some of them that are not Wi-Fi are not gonna have that Wi-Fi symbol. Every breaker that comes non-Wi-Fi comes Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi ones are what makes it smart. Now, the biggest thing is that the breakers don't have any terminals. All your terminals are terminated in the panel. This is great for roughing. Check this out. You're doing brand new construction and you just finished roughing everything in, right? But now the painters and the drywallers gotta come in. You can simply take an arc fault GF Wi-Fi breaker, pop it in and out of each circuit and turn it on to make sure you have no dead shorts. That's the way you're gonna get it certified and verified on camera. It's the easiest way to do that. You don't have to take out any wires off the breakers. Incredible, as an electrical contractor, that alone is gonna save you time and money. Leviton also gives you surge protection built into the breaker to meet current code requirements that Steve's gonna talk about in the next segment of this video. Last but not least, you put the Wi-Fi module inside the breaker and now it's officially smart. Leviton has got you covered. Now, yes, these things are gonna be additional cost, but these are upsells. You don't have to give Wi-Fi option, but what if the customer wants to or they're techie? You can easily plug and play it, add another four or $500 to the bottom line, and you're gonna win. All right, this is the Leviton panel. Let's get over to Steve Cavalleris at electricaltime.com to tell us what we need to look out for in the code. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for having me here on your show today to um, talk about some code stuff, you know, as it relates to a sub panel installation. Uh, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Steve Cavallaris. I'm an electrical instructor over at electricaltime.com. I'm also an electrical inspector. So one of the things um, that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the code. And, you know, Jeff is installing that sub panel, which is made by Leviton. So we're going to talk about code here. So the number one violation that I see, and I see this a lot. So here's the situation. You got an existing main breaker panel and you ran out of space. So what are you going to do? You're probably going to be installing a sub panel right next to that main breaker panel. And let's say you decide to run a hundred amp sub panel. What size feeder are you going to run? Well. If anybody said that they're going to be running a two gauge aluminum SCR cable, guess what? You're wrong in that installation. But I'll tell you how you could be right in another situation. Just hold on, I'll, I'll get to it. All right. So if we go to our impacity table, 
And if you're in 2014 or the 2017 code book, you're going to be looking for table 310.15B16. If you're in the 2020 or the 2023 code book, you're going to be looking at table 310.16. They changed the table numbers. I know it's enough to make you nuts. So if you look at the 75 degrees C for aluminum and you look at two gauge, you'll see it's only good for 90 amps. All right. So why are a lot of electricians picking the two gauge aluminum SER cable? Because that's the way they've always done it. And nobody's ever told them that it was wrong in that kind of installation. Now, it could be right, but you got to qualify under the 83% rule. And we find that in 310.12 in the 2020 and in the 2023 NEC. Okay, what is the 83% rule? So it says that if a feeder supplies the entire load to a dwelling unit, and you might say, well, how is a feeder going to supply the entire load to a dwelling unit? And it's real simple. Let's say you got the dwelling unit and you have your emergency service disconnect outside. That's your first point of disconnect. Anything past that's going to be a feeder. And let's say now your sub panel, it's now a sub panel that's in the house and you supply that feeder. Let's say it's 100 amps. Let's say that's the size feeder that you're using. I'm gonna keep it to the 100 amp example. So we got 100 amps times 83%, that gives us 83 amps. However, we have a an amperage limitation. It's gotta be between 100 amps and 400 amps, and that feeder must supply the entire load to the dwelling unit, all right? And that's the 83% rule. So please do not confuse the 83% rule table of 310.12a as a replacement table for the impacity table of 310.16. All right, so the number two violation, and I still see this. I can't believe it. Um, electricians are not using their torquing screwdrivers or torquing wrenches. It's a requirement of the code. And it's also in the listing instructions for the equipment that we're, we're installing. So if you don't believe me, next time you're you know working in a load center, it doesn't matter you know whose brand it is, look inside, you're gonna see a label in there. It's gonna have the torquing requirements. And because it's in there, it's in the manufacturer's instructions. And in the code, we have a special section it's 110.3b and it says hey you know if the manufacturer has a listed product and the instructions tell you to do something then you got to do it and if you don't do it then guess what you're in violation the third most common violation that i see with the installation of a sub panel sometimes the new sub panel that's a replacement sub panel is installed let's say 10 or 15 or 20 feet away right from where the old one was now the electrician has to make all of these extensions to go over to where the new sub panel is. But you got to be aware of the requirements for arc faulting. And 210.12, we're talking about a dwelling unit now, okay? So if I take any of those branch circuits and I extend them six feet or more, and that branch circuit serves an area in a dwelling unit where AFCI protection is required, then guess what? You're going to have to provide AFCI protection. And imagine what a mistake it would be if you didn't price this into your job. Let's say you got 20 breakers in that sub panel and all of them require AFCI protection. And then you get somebody like me, the inspector coming over and say, hey, where's your arc fault protection? Well, I don't have to install that. I'm just replacing the sub panel. I don't think so. 210.12, you better read it. I mean, that could cost you like $1,000, $2,000 to buy those breakers. So don't make that mistake when you're pricing the job. So again, my job is to teach the code. And what I decided to do um, every day, Monday through Friday, I do a free NEC code question and answer. And I send this to you by email. So again, it's free. All you got to do is go to my website, electricaltime.com. There's a button that's called subscribe. When you subscribe to that question and answer of the day, you're going to start getting the free code questions and answers. So go do that today. It's free. I hope you enjoy that daily email. And um, again, thanks, Jeff, for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. And uh, I guess, Jeff, it's now back to you. Thanks, Steve. Moving on to part three of this video, let's get downstairs to my team and let them show you how they replace sub panels in existence units.
All right, Brandon, how long did it take you to take that old panel out of here and get this new Leviton one in? So guys, if you know what you're doing, it just takes a few hours. It, uh, this Leviton panel is a game changer. It uh, really helps you out. If you see here, even the busing has uh, circuitry on it, labels your neutrals. It's pretty uh, user friendly. Right, and you know what I love about it is you brought all your wires, your hots and your neutrals right to the bus bar. So that means you really are not tying anything into the breaker. Right, you can basically land this whole panel live with your breakers out because none of your uh, terminations are connected to the bus bar until you insert your breaker. Nice, well, beautiful job, thank you so much. What does the Leviton panel come with to make sure that you can bond, whether you're gonna use this as your main disconnect, meaning the meter's just on the outside and this is your main disconnect, or if you're gonna use it as a up panel. Yeah, so this uh, Leviton panel comes with an L bracket here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yep. And it just bolts on right here, right? Bonds your uh, neutral to ground bar right there. So right there, if we jump it, then we're bonded. This becomes the main uh, source of power, the main disconnect per se. Even though we don't have a main breaker here, this does come with a main breaker. This is, happens to be main lug. So if you put a breaker in here, you're gonna go ahead and bond that most of the time because it will be your main. Another thing you had mentioned, uh, and I've got it right here, I'm gonna loop it. What is that right there? I don't know if you guys can see it. It looks like Leviton has given us some tie downs. Yeah, it's uh, they thought of it all. Look at look it up here. You can uh, for your zip ties to make your panel makeup nice and pretty. Nice, nice. And I see them all over the place. Wow, no one even told me about that. I just noticed it when you said it. That is pretty amazing. Thank you, Leviton. Beautiful job, awesome. Everything's looking good. We're no locks up, we're torqued back up. Torque ratings on these panels, by the way, look at the labels, okay? That's how you're gonna torque it up. Thank you, Steve Cavalleris, for telling us about the code on that. And I think I'm ready to put the uh, wireless module in here. Do we have it down here? So we got the wireless module. They're gonna get a module that actually bolts right onto the panel. I'm not sure if they have that, but they sent us the wired version. And I believe this one's gonna get wired into a separate breaker. We got plenty of breakers that they sent us. So let's get this thing in. I won't be doing a review video on that quite yet, because it's gonna take me some time to set up the app, but I will do a follow-up video, maybe a part three, part four, because this has been a part three right here. And then we're gonna put that in. I'm gonna get it on my smartphone. I'm gonna show you everything that does, or click the link below. You're gonna go straight to Leviton's website, and they're gonna tell you everything you need to know there. Leviton, thanks again for this panel. Steve, thank you for the code. Guys, thank you for installing it. I hope you enjoyed that video of my guys installing this sub panel. Hey, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button to get more tips, tricks, and how to level up as an electrician in the trade. We will see you on the next one.